another myth where we get to fire some guns. What's this one all about? The myth is that you're being shot at, you dive underwater, the water protects you from the bullets. You know, I've seen this in countless Hollywood movies. The hero's being chased by the bad guys. He jumps off a bridge and into, like, a river. They all start shooting where they think he is, and he escapes totally unscathed. Well, you know, I have no doubt that the water's going to slow down and eventually stop a bullet. But what we have to test is how deep would you have to be to be protected by it? How deep do you have to dive to survive? The Mythbusters will build a 10-foot-tall acrylic tank Add some ballistics gel, fill it with water, and start shooting. They'll move the gel up and down until they learn the survival depth for each gun they fire. Jamie begins work on the water tank. To cope with the force of gunshots, the inch-thick acrylic is held in place by iron girders. Adam, on the other hand, is working on something smaller. I'm starting to make a plexiglass box that will hold my ballistics gel block and allow it to be adjustable within our, uh, what do you call this, our bullet bench model fish tank sort of thing. Also known as the ballistics tank, Adam's gel holding box will slide into the tank where it will be raised or lowered to any given depth. And the gel? Well, believe it or not, the recipe comes courtesy of the FBI. And while the gel's setting, the tank's ready to be filled up. Slowly, the leaks are starting to appear. Their tank is marginally more waterproof than a sieve. In the meantime, the ballistics gel is all set. Its flesh-like consistency is such that if a bullet goes through it, you'd be dead. If it doesn't, you'd live to tell the tale. <sighs> to be honest, until right now, I wasn't sure that that was going to work. The rig is all fired up. Now the team just need to work out what to shoot it with. I think we should start out with the 9mm pistol that we have. And we could do the, uh, the M1 carbine and a shotgun. And then there's the big 50, the 50 caliber rifle, which is sort of the most powerful thing that you can own. And in fact, you can't own it in California. So we'll have to borrow one. We'll have to borrow one. Well, that ought to silence most of our detractors in this one. But I expect we'll still get some complaints. Yeah, you didn't use a cannon or something. <laughs> Cannons aside, Jamie goes shopping for the rest of the firepower. And he's come to the right place. They've got more guns here than a Tarantino movie. So this is like an elephant gun, then. What's that fancy black one there? Well, this is a little more macho. Macho Jamie's got enough firepower to start a military coup, let alone test this watery myth. He's even arranged to borrow the dreaded 50 caliber. This is a workout just picking it up. It weighs about 50 pounds. So can I see one of the bullets? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well. That's what this fires? It's smaller than my head. It's all right. Will he dare fire this mother indoors? Well, that depends on how the other guns do. And the starting gun is the smallest, the 9mm. So we're a 9mm pistol, 147 grain round, distance of 6 feet. OK, the gun is loaded. Three, two, one. Interesting. So, where's the bullet? That looks like we went right through the ballistics gel, Jamie. Sure enough, the bullet, fired at 960 feet per second, went clean through the gel. This means it was a fatal hit. Six feet of water ain't enough to stop a 9 mil pistol. So the team lowered the gel to seven feet. Okay, this is nine millimeter pistol, 147 grain round at seven feet. That's another one that went through. 
Shall we lower it to eight feet? Okay, this is nine millimeter pistol at eight feet. Three, two, one. And the result? Whoa, no, that didn't go all the way through. Jamie? Yeah. It's about half an inch under the surface of the ballistics gel. It's a non-lethal hit. Eight feet under, and you're safe from a nine mil. And for the next test, the shotgun. There's that sound. I know. James Heidemann is ready? So this is the three inch deer slug out of a shotgun. God, this is awkward. <laughs> three, two, one. It's busted the tank. Oh, That's all and water spilling straight onto the lights. This is seriously dangerous. Luckily, the power is pulled before anyone gets electrocuted. The team are safe, at least for now. Jesus wet, Jamie. There's a huge crack in the front piece here. Surprisingly, firing a pump action shotgun inside, not a good idea. But in all the mayhem, what exactly happened to the slug? We saw the little shotgun slug sitting on top of our ballistics gel and thought, erroneously it turns out, that it hadn't punctured the ballistics gel. But in fact, we looked carefully, we can see that not only did it puncture the ballistics gel, but knocked a massive chunk, a cone-sized chunk, out of the bottom of the ballistics gel. That's definitely a lethal hit. They pierced the gel, burst the tank, and maybe busted this watery myth. Adam and Jamie have had a shotgun setback. Does water stop bullets? Well, from a 12 gauge, absolutely not. It ruptured the tank and flooded the store. Lamps off, lamps off. Well, it looks like we're not gonna be shooting any more guns off in the shop. Yeah, you know, I think the problem with our rig is it doesn't have to be vertical. That's a worst case scenario, but all we really need is obviously a longer column of water, but a column of water could be at an angle, like a 30 degree angle. Which would actually be more realistically the way you would get shot at, you know, like somebody off to the side of a lake or a river or whatever. Their first rig was the worst case scenario. With the shooter directly above, the target needs to be deeper than the furthest bullet. Now, with the shooter shooting at 30 degrees, the target can be much closer to the surface. For an eight-foot penetrating bullet, he'd need to be just four feet underwater. <laughs> Adam begins recycling the busted vertical tank into the new, longer, 30-degree rig. He's ah. doubling the firing range as he makes a 20-foot railway on which the ballistics gel will be slid up or down to the necessary distance. While Adam's been working, Jamie's found somewhere to shoot into water at 30 degrees. It's not a lake or a river, but a public swimming pool. Worst case scenario today is that somebody dies from a bullet wound. The team head for the deep end to cause a splash with their calibrated rail rig. While gun expert Gina Rolski prepares their lethal weapons. The rig's in place, but because the pool is slightly shallower than they'd expected, it's ended up at an angle of 23 degrees rather than the plan 30. Everything's set for the ballistics gel. Now, the box jellyfish is one of the most lethal foes you'll encounter in your average swimming pool. They prefer temperatures between 79 and 82 degrees, and they give a nasty sting. If you see one, just swim in the other direction. And remember, he's just as afraid of you. With the jellyfish in place and the refraction aimer marked up, the pool experiment can begin. And first weapon up is a replica Civil War rifle, which will be firing Jamie's homemade bullets at 1,000 feet per second. This is the black powder rifle, um, ballistics gel at a distance of 15 feet. OK, cocking. And three. Two, one. 
<laughs> it's a bullseye on the cellophane. But where did the round end up? Directly underneath where I am. Where you are. It's about 25 feet. The bullet veered way off target. So the confused team try again with the gel at five feet. Three, two, one. That might have made it in. But when Adam looks for it, it's nowhere to be seen. And it's certainly not in the gel. I think when we're done with this, I think we'll be able to say that if you're you know, somehow transported back to the time of the Civil War and you're being chased by a battalion of soldiers, that actually diving into the water might actually save you. But how deep would a time traveler need to dive? The team now tests three feet, and for that, they step up safety. Okay, black powder rifle, distance of three feet. Oh, yeah, I see the round in the back of the box. That's definitely lethal at three feet. Dead through three feet, safe through five. But with the 23-degree shooting angle, you'd actually be safe just two feet under the surface. And next up, it's the first of the supersonic weapons, the 223 rifle, firing at a frightening 2,500 feet per second. So this is the 223 at 10 feet. Now that was loud. Frogman Adams in to assess the damage. That was right there. <laughs> well, there's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing just exploded. What are these hollow points or something? No, just full metal jacket. That's the very tip of it. I mean, it's, just, uh, it's littered down there. I got up all the pieces I could. Well, Adam, let's just bring this sucker right up to the shortest distance we can do. What's that, like three feet? Absolutely, it's three feet. Three, two, one. Surely three feet can't stop that mother. The tip of the bullet was just resting at the ballistics gel. Wow, this thing's breaking up the minute it hits the water. So, you know, no wonder we can't hit the ballistics gel. So, as surprised as I am to say it, 223, myth actually confirmed. On entering the water, the supersonic 223 bullet decelerates so fast that it disintegrates into tiny black fragments, which sink slowly to the bottom of the pool. So the team jumped the gun to the M1 firing at 2,800 feet per second. This is a serious weapon, and one that's already been through the Mythbusters mill. When Adam and Jamie tested how tough bulletproof glass was, no guns could penetrate it. Until, that is, they tried the M1. That went right oh. through it. This puppy flew straight through. And three, two, one. And the results, the same as for the 223, tiny fragments of bullet. You know what, instead of going to five feet, let's bring this thing right back up to, you know, that two foot, three foot mark that we had. Okay. This is the M1 Grand 30 caliber at two feet. Two, one. At two feet, the powerful M1 just pierces the ballistics gel. It's about four inches in, which by our calibration is just enough to break the skin. Incredibly, this myth is confirmed for another supersonic gun. Considering that out of water, that very bullet, when we were testing our blast chamber, went through two and a half inches of bulletproof glass, the water obviously has a profound effect on the bullet in completely eliminating its deadliness very quickly. It's two feet underwater, 10 inches down from the surface. The myth's confirmed. That only leaves the frightening 50 cal. But are the Mythbusters brave enough to shoot this brute into the pool? At the poolside, water is being surprisingly bulletproof. 
a few feet under, and you'd be safe from all the firepower they've used. Until now, when they're about to fire the biggest gun in town at 3,000 feet per second. I don't know whether you understand what is about to happen here, but <laughs> this is the M1 Grant. Yeah. This is the 50 caliber. <laughs> the M1 Grand holds 150 grains. This one is 600 grains. This kills you. This kills you and everyone else in the room. Despite its crazy size, it looks like Jamie's going to bite the bullet and really fire this thing. Yeah, let's just be prepared to get, unpack and get out of here really fast. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be gone before the pool fully drains. <laughs> Jamie's not being quite so lighthearted. So the safety's off now? I would think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> With the bullet loaded, it's time to step back to safety. For everyone except Jamie. Okay, eyes and ears. This is the 50 caliber at 10 feet. Come hell or high water, this beast is going to get fired. Three, two, one. <laughs> that was more like an explosion than a gunshot. But where's the banana bullet? There is no bullet in the ballistics gel. <gasps> but with this weapon, the bullet could have gone through the gel and buried itself in the far side of the pool. What do you got? I got a bunch of stuff. It expended all its energy still. within three feet and became totally non-lethal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> At 23 degrees, even the terrifying 50 cal won't get you. Just 14 inches under, and you'd be safe. Well, Adam, this is totally amazing. Even with the 50 caliber, an armor-piercing round, it lost all its energy within the first couple of feet. It ripped the copper jacket off of it and didn't penetrate the, the target. Well, just like all our other high-powered rifles. Yeah. And yet, with the slower muzzle velocity weapons, like a handgun, the black powder rifle, and the shotgun, we found deeper penetration, sometimes as much as eight feet. But at a 30 degree angle, you'd still only have to get your body under about three feet, which is quite achievable. Well, I guess you know what that means. Yeah, the myth is, is confirmed. confirmed. You would be safe. Hmm. Not that I'd want to try it. <laughs>